Welcome to the software portion of video training presented by Imprintables Warehouse. I'll be covering the Cut Studio software that is shipped with every roll and cutter ordered from Imprintables Warehouse. The first thing I'll be covering is setting up the page size. To set up the page size, we'll go up to File and Cutting Setup. We want to make sure that we have the cutter that we're going to be using in the drop down box. Today we're using the GX24 and click on properties on the right. That'll bring up our page size. Now what we want to do, what we want to make sure of before we get here is that we have had the cutter determine the page size or the material size that we have in the cutter. Once we make sure that's done, we click on get from machine you'll notice that these values here, the width value will change. Right now it's at almost 23. After we click the button it'll move it to 18, which is the material width that we have in our cutter. Click OK. And OK again. You'll see here that our page size right now, that's the 28 inch width. After we click OK, it'll change it to the 16 or 18 inch width. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, just with the zoom tool, which is right here on the toolbar. Just left click to zoom in. Now I'm going to show you how to import a design. To do that, we'll go to File, and then Import. The files that we're able to import into the Cut Studio software, you can go down to this drop down box here is a picture file, which is going to be either a bitmap or a JPEG, a Sticka Plus file, which is an STX extension, that's a proprietary rolling extension, an Illustrator file, which will generally be an AI or an EPS, or to view them all, we can just click on all files. Today we're going to be using an Illustrator file. Find the logo that you want to use, select it, and then just click on open. I'm going to click on this fit button so that we can see the design on the screen. That's up here on the toolbar. Once the design is on the screen, you can use the Cut Studio software to edit the design. You can see your manual for a list of all the available options. I'll just cover the ones that you're going to be using the most. First thing I'll cover here is the sizing. First, make sure that your image is selected, and to know that it's selected is basically just going to have a the lines on the image are going to be blue. Once it's selected, click on Properties. And you can see here our width and height. Always make sure this Keep Aspect button is checked. It's right underneath the width and height. You can change your width first, or height, it really doesn't matter. You can make this 3 inches, then just press the Tab button, and you should notice that your height should change along with it. I changed to 3.31. Click OK and design si the design size will change. Now that you have your design at the size that you want, you can use the multiple copy feature to duplicate your design. To do that, once again make sure that the image is selected, then click on Edit up on the toolbar, and multiple copy. Here you can determine how many units you would like wide or high. If you know that you can fit or that you would like four units wide on your page and five units high to give you a total of 20 images, just type those into the boxes. You can also change your spacing to say a tenth of an inch between the designs. The default's about a fifth of an inch. And that'll help you optimize your material usage. We'll change both of those to point 0.1. And click on OK. And you'll see that your designs will be duplicated. To see them all, we'll just click on this Fit button again. It's Fit to Screen. There's all of our designs.
Another good way to optimize your material is to utilize the rotate option. This will allow you to adjust your image to make sure you all always be able to use as much of your material as possible. To use the rotate, we'll just select one of these foxes we have here. And once again, if it's selected, it'll be blue. Hopefully you can see the rest of them are all black. Go to properties. And on, a ro on our rotation angle box, we'll just put in a value of 90. And you'll see that that one fox in the bottom corner will rotate 90 degrees. Now that can be helpful if you wanted to get some more on the screen here. Then you can just move them up or create more so you can optimize the width of your material. Now once we have our designs on the screen the way, the way that we want them, we're ready to cut. Anytime that you're using our, spe our Spectra heat applied materials, you want to make sure that you always mirror your design before cutting. To mirror your design, make sure that you have the image selected and go up to Object. And then down to Mirror. You'll see that your, that your images are now flipped or mirrored. Now we're ready to cut. Before we cut, we want to make sure that the images are at the origin point in the software. I'm going to get rid of this one fox here. To do that, we simply just select it and just click delete on your keyboard. Now get rid of it. Once they're all selected, we just want to click on this move button and it'll move it to our origin point. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so we can see that. Down in the lower left hand corner here on the computer there's a little 90 degree angle. That's our origin point. Pressing this move button that's up on the toolbar will just move everything to the lower left hand corner like so. The origin point on the software should match up with the origin point that you've already set up on your cutter. Once we have that done, we'll just go to File, and from the drop-down list, we'll click on Cutting. Once again, we'll just make sure that our GX24, or the cutter that you may be using, is selected in the drop-down list, and then we'll just click on OK.